I think we're here. Good morning, and uh, welcome to another Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. It's June 5th, 2017. Uh, yes, I am Tim Patterson, the Trade Show Guy and host of your weekly uh, vlog, vlog slash podcast. You can watch it live on Monday mornings at 9 Pacific on Facebook on the Trade Show Guy blog page or catch the uh, video on my blog at Trade Show Guy blog uh, when we post-produce it or subscribe to the podcast by searching uh, for Trade Show Guy on iTunes. And yes, on the produced version, uh, Mel, I don't think I've mentioned this, with the music intro, that's me on drums and bass and guitar. Just, you know, simple riff that doesn't do anything and, or go anywhere, but <laughs> it was fun to produce. Anyway, I'm the founder and owner of uh, Trade Show Guy Exhibits based in Salem, Oregon. We work with exhibitors that are looking to upgrade their current booth for any number of reasons. You know, maybe they're frustrated because it no longer accurately represents their brand or they're worried they don't have enough space or functionality uh, to do what they want to do or any other number of concerns or challenges. So check out the website at TradeShowGuyExhibits.com. Now, this morning on the Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee, we have a guest to discuss an interesting aspect of the exhibit world, Mel White, who's the VP of Marketing and Business Development for Classic Exhibits in Portland, Oregon. Mel, nice to see you. How was your weekend, by the way? It was it was an interesting weekend in Bend, Oregon. Um, as you know, Tim, I turned 60 and um, I decided to do a very long relay run um, in honor of turning 60. Well, very good. And you didn't run all 60 miles or, or whatever the distance was. You ran a couple of legs. Is that correct? No, it was it was a relay. So so my total distance is about seven, seven and a half miles. Very good. And uh, I, I I forgot to mention this before we were in the green room is that at the end of the, the, the podcast or the broadcast, I, I like to cover one good thing. And so if you want to uh, contribute one to the end, you can think about it while we're talking. It's uh, it's kind of I'm putting you on the spot, but uh Okay. It could be anything. It could be uh, an app. It could be an activity. It could be uh, an article you read. Uh, it could be, I don't know. I've got one in mind anyway, so we'll, we'll see what mm -hmm. happens. So I wanted to chat this morning about an aspect that we've talked about a number of times over the years, and that is when it comes to uh, getting a new exhibit, you can rent or you can buy. And there's uh, a lot of ways to look at this. Um, you know, I guess the first question is why would uh, a, a company consider renting an exhibit versus buying it obviously buying it you own it you can use it as long as you want as many years as you want but renting it you you just have it for the show and it's gone so what would be some of the considerations from your standpoint well i think there's a couple and it really depends on the exhibitor situation let's say it's a new exhibitor and the new exhibitor really doesn't is unfamiliar with trade shows and they don't really know what they want to do they don't know if they want to be in a 10 by 10 a 10 by 20 or an island and the, it's it, it's different for them. So a good way of dipping your toe in the water is to do a rental, to rent an exhibit, see um, how successful you're going to be, see what other people are doing, and then use that information to come back if you, if you did well and then purchase an exhibit or continue renting an exhibit beyond that. A lot of, a lot of companies will start that way and then what they'll do is they'll decide whether to purchase part of the exhibit, to rent part of the exhibit. A lot of companies will rent simply because it's just um, long term. They're changing their branding. They're changing their marketing. They want to do things different from show to show. And renting just makes more sense rather than making an investment in an exhibit that's set for two or three or four years. You may be changing the graphics, but rentals allow you, allow you to change it every single show. You know, I, we had a client last year that uh, had an interesting situation that came up. They, they got a hold of me. They said, you know, we, we want to buy an exhibit, but we're concerned about the logistics. We have a show one weekend in Baltimore, and about four days later, it's going to, they're going to do a show in, in uh, San Diego. And we started talking about it, and I said, maybe you should rent for both of them. And that's what they ended up mm -hmm. doing. So they just sent one exhibit one direction and another exhibit another direction. And their overall investment was probably uh, less than what they had, uh, you know, if they had purchased a, a brand new exhibit outright and tried to figure out the logistics, which we figured out was really impossible just because they were, uh, there was no time to break it down, ship it across country, set it up, and be ready for the next exhibit. So logistics were their main consideration. 
And that happens a lot. Folks will make the investment in an island exhibit, but on the inline, they'll rent the inline. Or as you said, Tim, maybe they have multiple shows and there's conflicting shows and it just makes sense to do a rental for those conflicting shows instead of buying one that you may only use once or twice every couple of years. So what's changed in the rental market over the last few years? Uh, we've talked a little bit about this, but uh, from a broader uh, uh, aspect, uh, it seems like 10 years ago, the choices were limited. Is that the same? Is, have choices increased a little bit? What, what's changed about the market? Well, I think everything has really changed about the rental market. If you really look back, even as much as five years ago, most people, they only had two options. Part of their options was to rent a portable exhibit like a pop-up exhibit. And the other extreme was to rent an exhibit from the general show contractor. And those, if you've seen those, they look like rentals. They're dirty. They're beat up. They're extrusion-based. Um, and they're just not a good reflection for most companies. But what's happened is there now so many custom rental options. You can rent anything from a 10 by 10, a 10 by 20, an island. You can get it customized. It, I mean, it at any given show, when I walk shows, I would guess 20 to 25% of all the exhibits on the show floor are rentals, and you would never know because so much has been done to upgrade the look of rentals um, within the exhibit industry. Just because there's so many uh, uh, choices and options that come along and the ability to change things out uh, has just made those uh, choices expand a lot, it sounds like. It's made it easy to make that decision, right. it really, because um, now with the rise of modular wall systems, uh, the, those can be used again and again. And really the focus is on the graphics. And what you're doing is really changing the graphics. The hardware is less of an issue um, than it was in the past. And people are willing to modify. I mean, a lot of the companies out there that you can rent exhibits for are willing to make significant changes and significant customization in order to highlight the marketing needs that a, a company has, whether it's a monitor stand, it's counters, um, it's just willing to do whatever it needs to do to make it look right for that client without it necessarily being a custom, custom booth. Exactly. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I heard when I first got in the industry 15 long years ago, <laughs> it's been that mm -hmm. long, was it, ah, oh, you can rent a booth, but it's, it's going to cost you about a third to half of what it takes to buy it. And, and that's sort of the rule of thumb they passed on or that I heard. Is that still uh, valid? I hate that equation. I know you I, do. I really do. <laughs> I do. I hate that equation only because I think it's still being used by some of the exhibit professionals out there. And let me put it a different way. That did make sense. Let's say when you were and it, we'll, we'll go back 10 years, Tim, and someone was deciding whether to rent a 10 by 10 a pop up. All right. And it did make sense if you were doing a small exhibit that you would do that math. Well, I can buy it for X amount um, or I can rent it for one third of that. Well, if I then it, if I have more than three shows then I might as well buy it. That equation doesn't really hold true anymore because people are not going to shows with the same look and feel from show to show. Almost every exhibit manager um, from show to show will change something up, will change the graphics so that one third rule doesn't really um, isn't the same. It isn't the same kind of criteria. Um, will renting cost more over the long term? Yeah, it will. In the same way that leasing a car will cost more than actually purchasing a car. But you know, leasing a car just like renting an exhibit, you kind of get what you want. You you get you you're able to change it um, every every so so many shows, um, and you there's a greater likelihood that you're going to focus on what you need to focus on and be successful. So yes, the math kind of works, but it doesn't really work. And I think most people are really budgeting per quarter or per, per half year. They aren't budgeting for the exhibit purchase itself. And, and it's a very different way that people look at exhibits now than they did even five years ago. I think you're right. You know, I've seen, a, I, I talked to some exhibitors at uh, the Natural Products Expo West in uh, Anaheim, which is a big Big show, and, and, and there's a lot of big exhibits there, and I and I found out one exhibit, which, you know, you think, oh, gosh, that's they spent a lot of money buying that. Well, it was a two-story, you know, it's a d double decker. Uh, it was a rental, and they can ch they, mm -hmm. they've done the same booth, a similar booth uh, over the years, but it is a rental, but they can change up a lot of the structure around it but still keep the same basic thing there. Uh, so they are renting it. They're committing to renting it, but, but that doesn't mean they're committed next time. They might change it completely, 
next time, uh, they might decide, you know what, we don't really need the double-decker, or we need something even bigger. And so uh, I think it gives you the flexibility uh, that, that owning an exhibit doesn't, because owning an exhibit, uh, which is great because you're getting something which is can be totally custom, that really matches your brand, you may not get that with... Uh, a rental exhibit, but you're you're kind of locked into that for as long as you're committed to it. Um, it, it you're right, and, I, and I guess I would o- offer two more options, Tim. One of the options is don't think of rental as just a uh, I'm only going to rent exhibit. What we're seeing more and more is folks are are purchasing a portion of the exhibit. And then they're renting a portion of the exhibit. Maybe they're renting on an island. They're, they're, they're purchasing the main tower. But the accessories, the counters, the monitor stands, the charging station, all of those elements they're renting because they want to change those up in some way. They don't know that they're going to be using the same counter every single time. So those those will change. So there's more of a kind of hybrid, more of a morphing that happens between those two that we're seeing that people make that, that selection of what of what they want. I, and I'll give you another example of rental that is more event than exhibit related. Um, a lot of companies now have these kind of sales seminars, these sales meetings, um, and they bring a couple thousand of their, their, their team in and they need counters, they need monitor stands, they need kiosks, they need workstations. And it doesn't make any sense to have 40 or 50 of those for that one-time use. It makes a lot more sense to rent it in the same way you would rent furniture for a wedding um, or any of those kind of events. If you see it that way, it works exactly the same. And I would say the other half of that, Tim, is is when we talk about customization, folks can get a totally custom rental. They just have to commit to renting that same or a version of that two, three, four or five times and at the end of that they will have paid for the exhibit without having to own it um, but they get all the use of the exhibit over that same time period and they get a look that's exactly what they want and at the end of that they don't own it but they may not want it anymore and and if they own it yeah. then they're they got to store it and commit it or, or or figure out what to do with it at the end of that but then after the four or five or six uses they can just say you know what we want to do something entirely different you know I, I, as an experience of talking to to a number of exhibitors over the years they um will live in a booth uh, for three or four days and realize it's not exactly what they thought it was going to be because the actual experience of it doesn't match up with what their design thought it would be. Uh, and so they'll decide that, oh, you know what, we, we really thought we were going to have, I'll give you an example, we did a booth for a company about 10 years ago and they had uh, about a 10 by 10 s- section they thought it was going to be for client meetings. Well, it turned out it was where their, their staffers were always taking breaks and after you know using that a couple of times, they said, that's not really what we want that space to be used for. Let's put more product there for display and they were end up doing meetings elsewhere. So living in a booth, for uh, a time or two for the three or four days you experience it differently than if you are designing it from kind of the 30,000 point view and trying to figure 30,000 foot view and trying to figure out exactly how it will be used you don't really know that until you use it and so that is another argument for possibly renting it instead of owning it yeah well, and there's so much anxiety. People come into that process because trade show exhibits are so expensive that the anxiety level is high. The pressure is to get it right. I've got to get it right. I've got to get it perfect because we'll own this for the next three or four years. Um, if you can take some of that anxiety out of it and really focus on what you're trying to achieve, what the company is trying to achieve, and do it through a rental, even if it's for the first couple of times, um, they're much more likely to be successful. And they end up focusing on what they're trying to achieve at the show, not so much about the structure itself. There's too much, too much, um, um, as I said, pressure to get the, the structure right and not get the marketing right. And it helps their budgeting from that angle too. They can, they can, they can yeah. not invest so much. They can use that budgeting for some other kind of marketing. So, yeah, yeah. very good. Anything? And, we, and, you, and you even talked about the storage, Tim. I mean, yeah. um, a lot of people don't don't have any place to store the exhibit, and they don't want to pay storage fees to an exhibit house month after month and renting it. Renting relieves you of all of those expenses as well. Exactly, or having space in your warehouse, which could be put to a different use as well. So, yeah, there is a lot of different ways to look at it. Are we leaving anything out that you think we should mention here before we wrap it up? I don't. I, I guess the only thing I would say is think of a rental exhibit in the same way that folks are now thinking of rental or thinking of cars, that 
um, whether you purchase or you lease a car. One of the things I read the other day is that 30% of all car purchases in 2016 were leases. Hmm. That, that shocked me. And as you, as the price of the car gets more expensive, like a BMW in 2016, 58% of all BMW purchases were leases. That doesn't and that's surprise not me, much yeah. different. And so from that angle, it's like, do you want to do the monthly payment? If you're okay with the monthly payment, why not swap out for a new car every two or three years? Uh, me, I don't like car payments. I just like to buy it and be done with it. And then I drive it <laughs> until I until I need yes. another one. <laughs> so it depends on your personal uh, or your company's uh, approach to how the budgeting works. So I would agree that. So <laughs> Have you come up with one good thing by any chance? I know I kind of put you on the spot at the beginning and, and that that's okay if you don't have one. I don't want to have one off the top of my head, Tim. Sorry. That's okay. So my one good thing is uh, supporting your favorite nonprofit. And I think that's a great thing to do. And I mention this because I volunteer at a uh, community radio station uh, here in Salem, KMUZ, and I do a reggae show every Monday night. And three times a year, we do a pledge drive, pledge week. And it's pledge week this week. So uh, mm-hmm. KMUZ.org is where you can find all of that. You can listen to my show live there. Uh, check it out. It'll be a lot of fun. So whatever your favorite nonprofit is, I think it's a great thing to support in your community. Mel, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome, Tim. It, it's all, it's always an honor. And I, I watch this, your video every single Monday, and it, it's a good way to start the week. Oh, well, good. Thanks, Mel. I'm glad you're a part of it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, no doubt. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye.